Welcome to the Dog Trainers Podcast, a podcast created by dog trainers, for dog trainers, or anyone who's ever fallen in love with man's best friend. Um, Michael Ellis had a couple tips, so at the end, and we're going to ask you this at, uh, as well. Um, we asked Michael Ellis, um, well, we asked Tyler, we'll do it in chronological. We said, so Tyler, what is, what is your advice out there for up and coming dog trainers? Um, and he answered, he goes, learn to listen, Mm -hmm. learn to listen to the dog, learn to listen to the people. Um, he goes, there's so many times people answer with, uh, phrases and sentences, uh, that weren't even related to the questions being asked. Yeah. Right. And he says, so the, the, the key is the, you will learn more when you listen and you'll be able to help more people when yeah. you listen. Uh, we asked Michael Ellis the same question and he said, so what's, what advice do you have? He goes, well, there are people who, um, are super goal oriented, right? They want to just get the dog trained. They want to just get, uh, you know, they want to get the end result. They want to make the sale. They want to do all these things. And those people don't, tend to have a good time in dog training as a, as a profession, right? He said, however, though, if, if you love the process, you know, he goes, you spend so much more time in process than you actually do at the end mm-hmm. result, right? You spend weeks training a dog just to be able to do a go home lesson with an owner and be like, see, right. he's great. And then they're like, wow, that's awesome. But it's all those little wins. It's the process of taking the dog out, walking him, working him, seeing the micro improvements day by day. And those little things he goes, if those things don't drive you, potentially dog training is not the career Correct. for you. Right. Um, and, and I would say that same thing, even with owners, like for me, I love dog training. I love those little wins, but I also love those little wins with people, right? Those little, those little aha moments. I'm addicted to the mm-hmm. aha moments with humans, um, where, you know, we've all been there. The reason we keep doing this is because we get different types of paychecks, right? We get emotional paychecks, like where we know we made a difference in that dog's life. Um, you know, uh, so many dogs that, you know, I started off in the shelter where it's like, I literally said, uh, you know, fuck everybody at this shelter. I'm going to go learn to be a dog trainer. I'm going to come back and help all these dogs, mm-hmm. you know, like having, having a passion like that, where we've kept so many dogs from being euthanized, um, you know, from, from going to the shelters, from, from getting rehomed, from getting mistreated simply through education. And so I'm going to redirect that question back to okay. you. Um, what advice do you have for up and coming dog trainers that would, that you think would add value to their careers as they grow? Yeah, I think, well, I think, yeah, a a combination of, of what both Tyler and Michael said, you know, touching on what Tyler said is like, (sighs) this is an exhausting question because there's so much. Um, so for me, I would say, you know, because we kind of like, touched base on this earlier, learn as much as you can. Never, like for me, I'm a student. And I say that in almost every video that I put out that I'm going to learn something from this dog today. Mm-hmm. That's it. And for me, that's what it's about is always be a student. And I think that that's what a good artist does. I think that that's what a good craftsman does is learning, growing, not being stuck inside a box and being traditional. I think I get a lot of shit for that too. Is like, I'm not traditional. You know, there's, and there's people mm-hmm. even in the balanced dog training world that will give me flack for not being traditional. It's like same team type thing. And it's, it, it, it is, but it, it is interesting. So I think just be, be true to yourself and always be a student and make sure that when you're getting into the, the industry, it's really hard to, to, to gain an ego really quick mm-hmm. because every mm-hmm. single day of your life, you have five to 10 people telling me, telling you how much you've changed their life. Sometimes these people mm-hmm. are crying. Sometimes these people are hugging each other, hugging you, bringing you gifts, buying you uh, mm-hmm. vacation homes for weeks at a time. I mean, buying you flights, yep. giving you personal jet attendances if you'd like. Um, mm-hmm. It's a very easy career to, to get to, to lose sight of the end goal. Very easy mm-hmm. because you have everybody right. around you applauding you and, and you are helping. And I think that you have to remind yourself and stay grounded. Even for me, to be honest, it's, um, it is, you know, and I, I try to be as honest as possible. I always have to, like, I meditate often to ground mm-hmm. myself, to realize why I'm in this business, what I'm doing. Cause some of the opportunities I get are way outside of my wildest imaginations, yeah. the people I work with, the places yep. I go, the things I do. And I always have to like every single night before I go to bed, I, I, take note of who's in the room and how grateful I am for these 
animals to still be in my life and still be alive. And, you know, the Taylor, my partner who, um, you know, helps me along the process and just, so gratuity, I even wrote it down on this piece of paper here. Um, cause I, nice. I always start any conversation with just gratitude of, of everything that I do, everything in life, you know, is I'm just grateful for. So I think as a young dog trainer, getting into the industry, don't ever get lost and lose sight of the end goal of why you started and always be a student and always show gratitude for your um, natural given gifts. If you were given a gift to be able to innately understand and have the instincts to work with people and dogs, because there's a big difference, um, mm -hmm. run that to the ground with passion and don't ever lose sight of the gift that you were given and work really hard and always be grateful. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. A fucking man, bro. That was awesome. That was awesome. I'm just going to cut that into its own YouTube cool. video. <laughs> I'd, I'd love that. that. I, that was so dope. I mean it. I mean, um, it's true. It's like, it's, it's really easy in, in, in the dog training world to gas yourself up because right. everyone is like, yeah, you know, oh yeah. And we're, we're talking, I'm going to, we can talk off record real quick. Cause then I just have to do an outro and we're done. Um, that's, I completely agree with you, bro. Like I'm in LA, I'm in literally 10 minutes from Hollywood and it, it gets here. It gets, it gets Easy. to your ego. It, it, it makes you, it's part um, of being human. You right. Know, it's part of being human. And it's, it's part of, you know, it's funny because I always have to check myself to be like these people in my life, I'm going to nurture these relationships so that they can help me help yeah. dogs. You know, so it's always like for my nonprofit that I started, it's like these people are donors or these people are guests or these people are things to help push a message. Yeah. Right. And um, it's funny because like, uh, you know, you're online and you see all these celebrity dog trainers that promote like oh, I'm working with Miley Cyrus or I'm working with this or I'm working with that. And it's like we're those celebrity dog trainers that we don't have to say who we worked with. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it should be that way. There should be that that professional. Well, yeah, you don't want to, you know, because you got lucky and you got referred to the right person. Right. You can't, you can't exactly. bounce your checks off that. Right, right, like, right. You know, no. that's right place, right time. That's all that yeah. is. Yep, and that's yep. There's a little bit of grace and a little yeah. bit of luck and everything that happens. All right, cool, man. Uh, anything else you want to talk about before yeah, I sign there's, out? There's 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 two things that I I, I want to mention uh, to anybody, yeah. even if it's one person. The 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 thing mm -hmm. that I mentioned that really helped me get over and move on from people talking really bad about you for no reason mm. is the David Goggins mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. that it, it, I send it to everybody, you know, my family who's like, yeah, I'm really dealing with, cause my, my sister is also an entrepreneur who started her own brand and, um, she's doing really successful. She's, she's, um, she's, she's doing great. And, um, and so, you know, I give her feedback and one of the big things that helped me is I don't remember what episode was cause Goggins has been on the Joe Rogan podcast, yeah. I think twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I don't know which one it was, but I remember they were talking about haters and they were talking about how YouTube specifically brings out the worst demons of hatred and the mm -hmm. people who are trying to get into your soul, twist you up because they are jealous of what you're doing and tear you down. They're unhappy, very unhappy with themselves. Yeah, unhappy. And I remember yeah. Yeah. these two dudes are just sitting there laughing, hysterically laughing because Joe's like, how do you deal with haters? And Goggins just starts laughing yeah. hysterically. <laughs> And he's like, dude, <laughs> he made it so simple, but it resonated with me and it changed my life. He said, dude, haters are going to come and go when they please. All I do, block, ignore, delete. And I was like, mm -hmm. and then I remember thinking, asking, I was like, if I did that, people would be like, oh, Tom Davis deleted my comment because I'm right. And then Joe asked, Joe asked like, well, aren't you going to think that, you know, blah, blah. And he said, no, dude, these guys are haters. They literally wake up. They're yeah. sitting in the basement or they're on a flight and they're just haters. And so anytime, uh -huh. if I'm trying to produce content to help people and anybody comes onto my platform to, to negatively talk about the message that I'm trying to deliver to the people who need it most, they get blocked and deleted immediately. Yeah. And that changed my life. I said, if it's okay for him to do that, because you're erasing negativity. Now, I, I, right. I, the only thing I want to add to that is, is there's a big difference between having a conversation Somebody says, hey, I don't mm -hmm. necessarily agree with e-callers. Can you explain to me why? That's different. Right. I don't have time for that mm -hmm. anyway, but it's it's different. But if somebody is just after you, like there's there's people who will say, He's, he, that person sucks. If anybody mm -hmm. on the world, in the world, especially in the dog training community, says that person sucks, 
you need to put up a mirror and really right, audit right. Mm-hmm. where that mm-hmm. person's great. It, that person sucks. We, really? That person sucks. Yeah, like, yeah. are we, a, you know, like I've seen grown ass adults pitchfork other trainers in the balanced dog training community yep. and tell them that they suck. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, I, I won't name these guys because I don't want to give them the, the clout. But but there are so many. Yeah, they won't be on. They won't there, be on. There the are podcast. so many. Uh, <laughs> actually, I'm really thinking of like one or two people that. But there's even but there's even beyond that. There's even people in the in the people who train balanced dog trainers. There's there's people on the sidelines that don't have their they, they don't have a business. They just train their own dogs. Right. And they'll say this stuff. So my right. point is, is like, yeah, you it's okay. So it's okay. So mental health is big and I'm so happy that it's becoming more like relevant and you know, it's, yeah. it's something that everybody needs to be talking about. I'm learning from it every day, trying to navigate through mm-hmm. life. You know, I'm exposed to millions of people a day with, with content that I, that mm-hmm. I put out and just having somebody of that caliber say, it's okay to just delete those people out of your life because they're not going to bring any, mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. And so for me, mm-hmm. that, that changed a lot for me. I said, oh, so I don't have to fight them. I spent like back in the day, dude, when I had like 20, you yeah, 20, 20,000 yeah. followers or 20,000 YouTube subscribers or something, I would be like, I would, I would, people would be so against some of the things that I do, even though the owners bawling their eyes out, right. crying because I changed their life. Right. I would fight tooth and nail and it would ruin my day. Well, you know, and so, mm-hmm. I think it, it's one of those universal truths that, the reason why it makes total sense, because Goggins is one guy, uh, Joe Rogan's, you know, he, he, I'm sure he just wanted to hear Goggins' is like reason, because Joe Rogan yeah. largely is the same way, just listening to his other stuff. Like, he, he agrees, but it goes way further than that, Tony Robbins, everybody else. And, like, the reason why they say to vet these people out, because you're right, a disagreement is one thing, but straight up negativity is cancerous. And you, the reason why a lot of mm-hmm. these guys delete this stuff is because Goggins doesn't give up fuck what anybody says that's a hard man right there so the reason why he deletes stuff is and brent if you don't know david goggins is a seal he has like all kinds of crazy stuff to his okay yeah, yeah, so, no, yeah, yeah. so the reason why they delete all this stuff is because they're protecting their viewers from this stuff they're making sure that right. there's not all this nonsense so that they can come watch david goggins and if this stuff doesn't help you then just fuck off but yeah, if it does on. then hang yeah. out you know what i mean yeah yeah yeah, so that that that's just, I just wanted to add that because it's such a big it was such a big part of my life that I felt like because there's even people that like I said before I keep my circle tight for a reason. There's people that literally will break bread with me and just stab you like right because you know, right. they just want something out of you or something. And that's just the that's just, that's just every industry that that exists everywhere. Yeah, right. Um, so anyway, so I just wanted to say that like just block that out and get it out, literally delete it out of your life if you see it and it and it and it and it it kind of like infuriates you delete it for sure on. for sure don't, don't let it ruin mm-hmm. your day can i just mention and then the, mm-hmm. yeah go ahead oh, i'm so sorry i just wanted to mention one last okay. thing that that's kind of on par with with this because we were talking about like i consider that to be like a universal truth like i was saying if, if it doesn't serve you just get rid of it immediately yeah because why not yeah yeah, yeah. but i think yeah and i think yeah sorry go ahead I'm so sorry. I thought you were... uh, another universal truth and then i'll let you kind of go on it is is the more the more you know about how to deal with that kind of thing the less it mm-hmm. stresses you because like when you're when you're newer to the whole mm-hmm. thing, you don't know how to deal with it. You feel like you have to directly combat it. Because I've been there too. Is mm-hmm. you address it, you do what you know how to do. All right, you know, you know what? I'm right, and here's why. But the the more like you get that vision and that that understanding of it all, you're like, you know, I could engage with you, or I could just block you, or I could just whatever. And and you feel more free. I think that's why it doesn't bother you anymore, like it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For for me, there's always there was always this like intrinsic desire like no i have to teach you or i have yes, to convince right. you or i have to help you because that's yeah, our right. form of help right like it's it's like anyone who has a belief like even if you try a good restaurant you're like hey watch this restaurant or if you watch a good movie you're like watch this movie and they'll, they'll be like that movie fucking sucked right like we always want to give whatever grace that we find in life to yeah. other people and some people think that's what they're doing when they're pushing yeah. us down it's like putting down a religion yeah. or putting down a political view well, it's like come on and 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 the reality of it is is like there are things that we could try and say in those moments to maybe try and convince them but again if you're not yeah. ready to receive it you're yeah. not ready to receive it and someone might have to go through five other dog trainers and then come back to you and be like mm, yeah and that's a that's yeah. that's a skill though that, like, that the actual <laughs> you know? trainer has to learn if the person's not ready to yeah. receive the message you have yeah. to get good at recognizing that and be like look man it's all good you know we're just not mm-hmm. vibing right now i don't hate you it's it's not a problem but 
I'm also not going to waste my time. No disrespect. See you later.